Running road marathons and running trail ultras is like participating in two entirely different sports. And people often ask what the difference is between preparing for a marathon and preparing for an ultra marathon. There are definitely many similarities, but there are also some huge differences. And in two weeks, I'll be running in my first 50 km ultramarathon since 2019. And Mary is preparing for the 30k version, having already run an ultramarathon this year. So we thought, why not share our thoughts and start a conversation around what we think is important to consider when preparing for an ultra. But we also needed some advice from someone who is a lot further down the ultra experience line than us. Now, usually we chat with our buddy John from Glasgow about all things ultra, but with John currently half a world away, we decided not to pester him this time, and instead we're pestering John. That's right, our other buddy John, who's moved to Thailand at the same time as us, and you probably have seen in a few of the videos before now. And he has run multiple ultras, including four 100 milers. So I went to meet John for a training run on Koh Samui of around 30 kilometers and a thousand meters of elevation, because apparently it's the thing to do. You all right? Yeah. Looking forward to a trail run. I'm not doing trail run. Oh yeah, I'm doing a trail run. I don't even know if I'm doing a trail run, to be honest with you. We're not sure. We're just going to pick our way through. What are you doing? I'm just going to work it out now. Oh, sorry. Interrupting. Ready? No. <laughs> Ready? No. <laughs> Ready? No. <laughs> right, see you later. Bye-bye. Have a good run. Yeah, I'll see you. Back at the car. Before we talk with John, let's start with the obvious physical differences between trail and road. For the most part, road marathons are flat-ish, not all, but a good portion. And trail is traditionally the opposite, much more up and down, and again, not exclusively. Therefore, on trail, not only are all of your tiny stabilizer muscles working overtime negotiating routes, rocks, trail in general, but you're also using your muscles in a different way to take you up hills and help you down them. Let's just simplify it by saying there is way more up and down and side to side movement where trail is involved. I'll let Mary explain what she thought was one of the major differences because she went out on her own run whilst John and I were in the hills. So for me, the main difference physically in running trail ultra kind of thing other than marathon is the difference in pace and how you push yourself um, in a marathon it's steady it's one pace you're really trying to maintain through the whole thing that you've pre-planned and I think when you're doing trails and ultras you can't really predict exactly what your pace will be because it's totally dependent on the terrain and I quite liked that at UTMB because it really takes the pressure off hitting anything um, and it makes you, I think, just be more present and observant of your surroundings and thinking about how you need to react physically, like by slowing down or engaging your core or changing your stride length for uphills or downhills. So, yeah, it makes you really be in the moment and to think about how you can respond to the environment you're running in, which is good. And I had one phrase that I kept repeating in my head because I've never actually, I suppose I have walked in a race um, before, but I had a saying which was run when you can and walk if you need. And that was really good. And it encouraged me to start running. If I'd done a stretch of walking like up a hill, I had in my head run when you can so as soon as I felt I could run I started running and if I needed to walk I walked. Simples. As much as the views behind me may look nice they certainly aren't. 
Look at that. The road is literally eroding away on the side. Yeah, don't you go too close. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to take a photo of that. I thought this was the best time to talk to John about why you would choose voluntarily to do ultra marathons while we're walking up the second big hill of the day. John, what draws you to ultra marathons? Like, what do you think the biggest difference between marathons and ultras is? Um, they run a lot slower, obviously. But I think for, in terms of the draw, I think why a lot of people do it is it's that just pushing your boundaries. And I think as runners, we're always, you know, we try and run PBs, we try and get faster. And then that gets a bit samey and then, well for me anyway, I was just like, I wonder if I've run a few marathons, can I run further than a marathon? And I did a 100k first on the road and then I was like, well, you start to wonder how far could I do, what, what could I do next? And just pushing your limits, I suppose. And how many, how many hundred milers have you done? Because you've done a few. I've done four, I've finished 400 milers. Uh, I didn't finish one, the Cotswold Way. Uh, I bailed at 72 miles after throwing up. Oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, finished four. So that's uh, the South Downs Way, North Downs Way, Thames Path, and Lakeland 100. Yeah, that's insane. Like, I've done 33 miles is currently my longest. And, and uh, like you say, it's just every time you get a little bit longer, you push a little bit harder. Yeah. But uh, that's what I also think the, the difference between the main difference between marathons and ultras is not the training necessarily, it's the mindset. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's just <laughs> accepting you're gonna go through some really dark places, yeah. you're gonna go through some, re through some really hard spots, and uh, and it's okay. And um, something I, sa I said after the first one I did, someone said, well, why, why would you do that? And I just, um, for me, there's something empowering about doing something that is inherently unpleasant for a long time yeah. you can stop no one's making you do it so at any point you can stop but you don't and you force yourself to carry on and having the the will and the strength and the resilience to even though nothing is making you carry on except the will to carry on that, uh, there's yeah. something powerful about that you've hit the nail on the head there no one no one is making you do that yeah. no one's making us do Columbia Trail Masters and yet here we are training for it and doing it no one's no one's told us we have to do that so i think it's very psychological yeah and uh, you know some of the best ultra runners people like courtney dowalter but um they talk about the pain cave and how they almost like welcome the, the the pain and they 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 know that it is part of the you know it sounds a bit cheesy but part of the journey part of the ultra and they do, it's just how you deal with that courtney dowalter talks about you know uh, problem solving seeing a hundred mile event is a long problem solving challenge and as the problems come up you, you deal with them whether it's blisters or nausea or whatever and you deal with the problem you move on and it's the solving problem after problem keeping going yeah and uh, there's this enormous sense of accomplishment when you manage to get to the end of something like that having faced you know so many tribulations yeah what is interesting though is that real runners often say like proper runners proper good marathon runners say how could you possibly run 100 miles people who can run marathons much quicker than me and the thing is, I say to them, it's a different sport. It's not, at no point are you running threshold pace. So you, you're not even, you know, elevating your heart rate much. Well, I mean, you are when you're walking up hills like this, but, <laughs> but you're never sort of pushing. It's just, it's keeping it going. It's just, it's the length of the effort, not the sort of intensity of the effort. And like my granddad ran marathons. He can't, can't understand running hundred miles. I told him I stop and I eat. And he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's a different game. It is a different game and it's, and in a marathon it hurts but almost you know the pain's going to be over yeah. reasonably soon yeah. in an ultra marathon the pain can start at 10 kilometers in of a 160 kilometer race and then it's yeah. just dealing with it like you say solving problems yeah. oh my goodness well done buddy oh, oh god couldn't have done much more than that today. no oh, dear. that was intense Right, I've got to find out where Mary is now. I'm going to find Mary now. Apparently, she's in the best coffee shop I've ever seen. Look what I found. How'd your run go? Really good, actually. Now that I've had a coffee, <laughs> I'm feeling amazing. At the time, to be honest, 
my legs felt pretty heavy and sluggish. I think I, I am still a bit tired from the UTMB, but um, yeah, not all runs are easy, are they? So it was a bit of a grind, but I got some gorgeous views, beaches, the big Buddha. Oh, what, all for the camera? For, the, for this video? I mean, I was just trying to take it in with my eyes. She's back, baby. She's back. I filmed a little bit on a roadside. <laughs> no, I got one bit on a beach. Welcome back, Mary. <laughs> Didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> That's more like it, less running, more chilling, and welcome to a segment we like to call Spa Chat! I mean, we're not really in a spa. It's definitely as relaxing as a spa. It's as close as you're gonna get, um, as tenuous link as possible, but we're keeping the car chat, spa chat alive. Let's talk ultra marathon running, Mary. Um, I think we touched on the main differences while we were out there. John summed it up very nicely when he said it's really about the mindset and it's not about running a time. And sometimes it's not even about running, it's just finishing and having that endurance mindset, the mindset to endure. Yeah, I talked about how you, it kind of makes you be more in the moment because you have to respond to the environment. You can't kind of just go out and run at one pace. You can't have a set pace to run. You can't even have an idea of what it'll take to finish. You just, to finish is always the goal in these types of races rather yeah. than, oh, I think I can do it in this time because you never know what's gonna come. Courtney DeWalter calls it puzzle problem solving. Yeah. Problems are gonna happen and then it's like, oh, how do I solve this bit? How do I solve yeah. that bit? Uh, I think ultimately for me is ultra marathons are a little bit about adventure which we had today. Like, John and I had an adventure in the middle of the island. It was pretty intense, but we had an adventure, and that's the first thing. Yeah. But the second thing is teaching yourself to endure, isn't it? So you don't need in your training, if you're training for an ultramarathon, you don't need to run more than a marathon. You never do, because on top of a marathon is really mindset. If you have consistency, then it comes down to mindset, and whatever is thrown at you on the day, you're going to be able to handle, because there's going to be dark times, there's going to be hard times, there's going to be moments of elation. So don't fret on your training. It's the biggest question I get when it comes to ultramarathons is how do you prepare for an ultramarathon differently to a marathon? Yeah. And really, I don't think you do. Just not physically anyway, just mentally, it's, just, it's a completely different set of skills. Yeah, learning how to push on when things feel really, really tough. Not necessarily about the running. No, just mentally tough. Like you, you, you. I would say in ultra marathons is as close as you get to imposter syndrome as a runner. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing this. This is too tough. All of those thoughts crop up when you're going up a hill or something, don't they? Yeah. And if or you falling in a stream. or falling in a stream, and if you know that those are coming, if you know that those dark times or those negative thoughts are coming then it's as simple as just thinking of them like a cloud. Just see them, accept them, there's that thought, on your way. Mm -hmm. And then move on, because they are just thoughts. Everyone's good enough to do an ultra marathon. You don't have to be this uber runner. That it, people walk them, and that's okay. I think you have to on some of those thoughts. Though. Oh yeah, 100%. Like, uh, there is no shame that the top, top ultra runners in the world walk segments. Admittedly, they walk less than mere mortals like us, but they walk segments. It's all right. So, if you're ever in doubt about doing an ultra, if you've done some marathons or if you've done road running, different set of skills, very exciting. It's an adventure. It teaches you to endure. And also, the other thing is, I think, is you can take that mindset, that endurance mindset, out into your life, not just training. Yeah. You can suffer that little bit more in your job. You can push on in other situations, whereas maybe you wouldn't have done beforehand because you have that mental fortitude now. Yeah, I think it translates to everything in life. Yeah. And you just feel epic and awesome for doing it. So, Yeah. that's really good. That being said, the run that we just did today, I did 26 kilometers and it was 900 meters of elevation. 
and in two weeks I've got 53 kilometers I think and 1500 meters of elevation I think it's starting to sink in you've got 30 kilometers and a thousand meters yeah so if you're interested in how we fare in the next couple of weeks in the lead up we're going to be talking through our race calendar for the next few months we're going to be talking through our shoe rotations for the start of 2022 and we're going to certainly be talking a lot about how we're preparing properly for the ultra marathon or the trail 30k that we're doing but the first thing is this video and telling you that you don't need to do much more than train for a marathon just prepare your mind for an adventure great place to finish great place to finish peace out <laughs>